So when we think of Les Curvas, we think of serious theater. But what distinguishes Curvas in the landscape of Soviet theaters is his focus on popular culture. And he was very clear about saying, what we need to do, those of us who are making culture in Ukraine, is to bring Ukrainian culture to the street. And that actually is really, really unique. And specifically starting from the late 1920s, he and a bunch of other artists were allowed to go to uh, Weimar, Germany. And we know they went to a cabaret called La Scala, which was one of the most um, popular and famous cabarets in Weimar, Berlin, known for its line of Scala girls. They came back and he wanted to do a similar kind of show for Soviet Ukraine. And what they created was a show called Hello from Radio 477, exclamation point. 477 is the radio frequency of Kharkiv, which is the capital of Soviet Ukraine. And it was specifically called a review, a review, a variety show. And it is indeed the first ever Ukrainian language musical review. And it's like absolutely nothing that is being done anywhere in the Soviet Union. What made Kurbas special and his company special was their focus on training and technique. The body, the voice, he focused on how to create what he called peritvornya, transformation. How to create one gesture that summarizes your characters and when repeated would then convey the meaning of the play to the audience. Interestingly, other directors at the time, um, including Michael Chekhov, including Bertolt Brecht, were also playing with gestures that um, conveyed a character. Many people in his milieu didn't like him. Kurbas, he was clearly the most talented. He was making the most innovative work, um, and that can make you a lot of enemies. And he was thrown out of his theater, actually, in 1933, after a play called Maklena Grasa that was about the Holodomor, the famine. He was arrested. He was sent to the Solovki concentration camp in 1934, which is way up north, and he was there doing theater until 1937. Many of the people in the secret police working in the Gulag fancied themselves patrons of the arts. You have a lot of artists that have been arrested in your camp. Uh, there's not a lot to do in the far north. So a lot of camps actually ran theaters. And in fact, he was in the camp with um, his close uh, co-worker, colleague, uh, partner in theater, Mikola Kulish, who was probably the most famous playwright at the time, and they were actually shot on the same day. Because of this centralization of the arts that happened by the late 1930s in the Soviet Union, scholars then took that and thought of Moscow as the center, that somehow everything's happening in Moscow and it kind of like diffuses out to the regions. But when you look at the historical record, you don't see that at all. Those of us who study Ukraine get very frustrated with the Russian avant-garde. Um, often they're people who are not ethnically Russian, they're people coming from the Russian Empire. And avant-garde art, experimental art, are people reconsidering the role of art in society, are making those experiments all over the former empire. And I love the example of Kurbas. He does Macbeth in a small town called Vila Tsirkva that's about 100 kilometers from Kiev. He's doing an experimental Macbeth with his actors who were like training on like vocal and physical technique in a tiny town in wartime. That's revolutionary theater. He brought a different tradition of German language, Polish language, theater, technique, combined with this sort of weird Ukrainian language itinerant theater he'd grown up in, he brought that to the Russian Empire and created a company and a workshop environment where experiment could happen. So he was very good at developing talent. He brought interesting influences into a new place um, and brought Ukrainian language theater to a new level, right? Really bringing it in line with Kind of global theater trends, um, really bringing a lot of new texts to Ukrainian language theater, um, and really raising the level of Ukrainian language theater. It wasn't just the uh, romantic um, melodramas that we loved as audiences that made us cry. It was actually theater that was difficult, that was challenging, that was very funny and biting and modern. 
he was part of a group of people who really believed art could change the world. And I actually think anyone who believes that theater can change the world and works to do that is special.